All right, I want to. I think I want to. I think we talk about SSDs. Yeah, let's. Jeff, you got. You just finished. You just finished this article. The SSD endurance experiment. <clears throat> they're all dead. Yes. So, Finally. <laughs> so reset for us the SSD endurance experiment because we've been doing this a while, right? Yeah, since it basically about last, or I guess no, a year and a half ago, basically. Uh, we took six SSDs and decided how much data we could write to them before they burned out and kind of try to figure out what happens during that time. Do they slow down at all? Do they become less reliable at retaining data? Uh, and then sort of what happens when a drive actually runs out of flash, when it burns through, you know, sort of the over-provisioned area that it has and can't write data anymore? Do you lose what's on the drive? You know, does your computer explode? We just kind of wanted to see what would happen. So we took six SSDs and we just started writing data to them. We stopped every 100 terabytes and checked, you know, all their health variables and ran a bunch of performance tests. And we just kept going until one by one the drives all kind of died. And, and the last one, last one died, I guess, last week or maybe a week and a half ago. It was actually on vacation and out of the office when it happened. Uh, but the last sort of survivor was the Samsung 840 Pro, which wrote over 2.4 petabytes, um, which is ridiculous was it, was, I mean, it a, was it alone when it died or was there someone with it it, it was well it, it sort of was and it wasn't because when i came back i sort of you know i logged into the machine and, and everything was kind of frozen um but the drive was presumably at that point still accessible uh it still showed up in the windows explorer and then when i double clicked on it explorer hung and you know like a second later the uh, the intel storage driver popped up a little message saying that it had been disconnected so i think i technically got to watch its its last gasp of breath before it died god that's sad <laughs> it's it is kind of i feel kind of bad about this you know we were not kind to these drives i they wrote way way more data at a much higher rate than any reasonable consumer is gonna gonna put them through um, which is good because we learned that the modern SSDs have no problem surviving what we would consider a sort of a typical consumer workload. Most people are only going to write maybe a few terabytes per year. You know, if you're a really heavy user, maybe you get into double digits per year. Uh, but all of these drives wrote hundreds of terabytes without any any problems whatsoever. And uh, and most of them, I mean, the, the 840 Pro didn't have any problems really until the very end. So it wrote petabytes of data without a single error. Wow. That's very cool. And so, Jeff, we had uh, we had a couple of, like, the, I think since the last update, was there, were there two drives since the last update? Or was there just one left? Uh, there were two. I mean, one was sort of half left. Um, so two, we had two of Kingston's HyperX 3K drives. These are Sandforce-based drives, so they have uh, this DuraWrite compression scheme that compresses incoming data so that you use less of the flash, so in theory the drive lasts longer. So what we did was we took one of the drives and we tested it like all the other ones with incompressible data to sort of level the playing field. And that drive died around 700 terabytes, I think, 750. Um, the other drive we tested with partially compressible data and uh, it ended up writing over two petabytes um, and actually was you know it, it sort of highlights the fact that there tends to be some variance from you know NAND chip to NAND chip and, and as a result one SSD to the next uh, because if even if you take into account the fact that this uh, drive wrote less data because it was compressing it as it came in it still wrote twice as much as the other HyperX drive did before it died. Um, so this is kind of a, a cherry drive. It's sort of like with a CPU, how some CPUs are more comfortable running at higher voltages and higher clock speeds than others, even if it's the same chip from the same, you know, from the same wafer even. Uh, this is just one of those cases where this particular batch of NAND was, you know, just really, really durable. We had hardly any reallocated sectors, hardly any programming and erase failures over the, the extent of the drive's life. Uh, you know, this drive log, logged fewer flash failures than any other drive, sort of for the amount of data that it wrote. So it just had, ended up being one of those drives with really robust flash. Uh, it died kind of expect, unexpectedly. Um, you know, we had, uh, we made it up to 2.1 petabytes. We did our usual performance check uh, and health check at that time. Everything was fine. 
rebooted the system and the drive didn't appear. Uh, so it may have, I don't know, suffered a, a massive flash fa failure when the, the power cycled there or something else happened with the drive and, and that was it and it was completely unresponsive. Um, so that was at 2.1 petabytes, which left the Samsung 840 Pro as kind of the last SSD standing. And uh, this is the only one that was actually problem-free right up to the very end. The, the HyperX drive had some uncorrectable errors around the petabyte mark, which is something that, you know, that can compromise data, that can result in a system crash. So it's kind of, at that point, you would take a drive out of service, but we sort of let it continue on just to see how many writes it would take to kill it. Uh, the, the Samsung A40 Pro had not a single error the entire time. It was basically flawless, uh, even though it actually lost a lot of uh, a lot of flash to um, you know sort of normal wear and tear. By the end, it had reallocated uh, over 7,000 sectors for almost 11 gigabytes of flash that it's sort of retired and deemed as no longer fit for use. Uh, but mm. it still actually at that point had a bunch in reserve. I thought it would go past 2.5. Uh, or petabytes uh, and sort of into 2.7 if you sort of look at the decay rate that we've got in, uh, in the story. Uh, but it, it failed unexpectedly, sort of like the, the 840 series did as well. There were, there were no more warning messages. Um, it just kind of stopped writing, disappeared from the system, and we weren't able to recover any data from it. So it was a sudden failure, one that we figured was going to happen eventually. Um, but it kind of struck without warning, which is a little surprising that both of the Samsung drives did it. All the other ones provided plenty of warning messages. Uh, sometimes they were a little bit premature. The drives had a lot of life left in them at that point. But uh, even sort of right up to the very end, the even Samsung's Magician utility, which is kind of its uh, SSD utility for Windows that monitors health and, and lets you do various system optimizations. Even that utility said the drives were in good health, including the one that had recovered or that had posted hundreds of unrecover or uh, uncorrectable errors at that point. Uh, so the Samsung drives aren't as good uh, based on what we've seen as sort of reporting the actual health of the drive. Uh, but they did last incredibly long. So it's like, hey, everything's fine, everything's fine. Everybody else is dead and everything's still fine. <laughs> And, and then it's not. <laughs> then sudden heart attack, right? Yeah. yeah. It's, well, and it's, it's, it's kind of academic at this point, too, because we didn't really run into these problems until after hundreds of terabytes of writes. These are all consumer-grade drives that are really not designed. They're not spec to, to write more than a couple of hundred terabytes of writes. I mean, some of them, the Intel 335 series is only rated for, I think, 22 terabytes of writes, which still ends up being, I think, something like 20 gigs per day over the three-year warranty length. Um, so all of the problems that we ended up encountering, uh, especially the, the sort of annoying bit where these drives are dying and they're not slipping into a read-only mode where you can actually recover data from them, only a couple of drives actually did that. We're encountering these problems at the very, very edge of, you know, what... I, I, it, it's hard to imagine a situation apart from just recording lots of raw 4K video where you would actually need to write this much data to a drive in sort of a non-enterprise or server environment. Yeah. And, and yeah. And, and, and they, they seem to basically be engineered for what you need and, and way more. <laughs> so um, now let's talk real quick about performance because I think there's a concern at least potentially as the drive ages and it uses burns through some of that reallocated you know spare area and stuff the performance could change uh, so what did you see uh, as as these drives all aged a whole lot of nothing uh, <laughs> you know that was one of the the more interesting things is that performance was really consistent across the length of the experiment there are a couple of outliers if you if you look at the graphs a couple of instances and a couple of tests uh, where the drives were a little bit slower, uh, but then they would all bounce back for the most part. I mean, remarkably consistent performance, not only in sort of the targeted benchmarks that we ran every 100 terabytes, but the speed at which the drives were able to write all the data that we were sort of loading up um, sort of in between those benchmarking sessions. Um, you know, even the the 840 Pro, which had really inconsistent write speeds from one batch of writes to the next, 
was consistently inconsistent in that behavior. So if you look at the graph, it kind of has this, this thicker line where it's oscillating back and forth, and it did that basically for its entire life. So the behavior of all the drives was, was reasonably consistent for the length of the experiment. Um, you know, cells do actually become more difficult to program and to read from as they age, but part of the reason why blocks are reallocated even though there isn't a sector failure is because it, they'll get to a point where the drive just decides that it's too much trouble, it's too slow to access that sector, so let's replace it with something fresh. So I think that's why we didn't see uh, really much of a performance slowdown over time. Um, you can see it in a couple of instances, especially with the, the Corsair Neutron GTX. Um, in the actual sort of endurance portion of the the right speed test we did, and that's only uh, a slowdown right as the drive was dying. It, it sort of slowed down leading up to that final death over the last you know few terabytes probably. Yeah. So we had six different drives, right? And there were seven, six, six different drives, uh, different brands, right? Um, that's not a ton of samples. So let's talk about just like the 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 actual result if there is one of an experiment like this where we were kind of limited on what we sample well yeah I mean, we had two examples of the HyperX and only one each of all the other drives so you, you can't really make any manufacturer or model specific um, assessments I mean the, the fact that both Samsung drives didn't have warnings um, you know that seems to be maybe a manufacturer specific thing just because of that's their software is not keying in on certain variables to assess the health of the drive but apart from that we can't really um, you know make any judgments based on the individual manufacturers or drives but because we had six drives and they all very very easily made it past you know 300 terabytes of writes without problems that's sort of a situation where I'm comfortable saying that, you know, modern SSDs for the average user with an average write load, you're not going to see any problems. I think the fact that all six drives, the fact that they were also from six manufacturers, six different models, and they all did just fine for anything that sort of approaches a reasonable workload for a consumer drive, I think means that we can have a reasonable level of confidence uh, in sort of the modern SSDs that are out there right now. Whether or not, you know, every drive off the shelf is going to make it past a petabyte or two petabytes like some of these drives did, I think that the chances are good that there are a bunch of drives out there that will last this long. Um, you know, we had three drives. Half of the drives made it past a petabyte, which is, um, you know, not something I'd put money on if you, you know, gave me a stack of SSDs and asked me which one was going to last the longest. But I think it's safe to assume that a lot of these consumer drives can last a lot longer than the, the manufacturer specifications promise. Hmm. So I understand you're going to be doing a, a, a vocal performance now. <laughs> no, I, a... I don't have a, a voice for singing, but... I did kind of have to sneak a little something special at the uh, the end of the article, sort of. Jordan I can sing I had this. A few lines in my head as I was doing testing in the the final. Is there weeks a that melody kind of turned that was into something to go with bigger? Those? Oh yes, oh yes. It's, oh, I it's, see. I will it's survive. A gainer cover. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Jordan, if you want to warm up for a minute, that's fine, and then we'll you can just go ahead. <laughs> wow, you really did write a song. I'm looking at this. This is, this is multiple verses in codas. I mean, this is impressive. Now, I hear the cake version, I Jeff. wouldn't go so far I... as calling it impressive. <laughs> but I hear the cake version time. of this. Now, is, I, the, yeah. is the idea, Scott, in, in the fantasy in, in your head of how this is supposed to play out, that I would sing it in a falsetto? You know... I, I think it's totally optional, Jordan, because that would work. But I, like I was telling you, when I hear that Jeff wrote this, I hear the Cake version of this song. Have you heard Cake's version of this? Which is very, no. very different because they don't like melodies not allowed. You know, they're they're just different. And, At first, I, was, I don't know Cake very well. Uh, know the... no, they're, they're great. Like, I really like what they did with this song. But, um, I see. I see. but that's what I hear. So, I, you know, hey, your interpretation is your interpretation. That's... I don't think I don't think we're gonna I, get one. Yeah, I don't I don't know if I have. <laughs> Maybe the, should the, have given them a little bit of. Warning. We probably yeah. Well, that would have been yeah. That would have been nice. <laughs> I don't I don't want to be nice, you know. So. That's I, okay. I think I'm I'm most impressed with this with this chorus of Oh no, not I! I will survive as long as I know how to write. I know I'll still uh, stay alive. I've got all my selves to give, and a persistent will to live. Man. 
It's heavy stuff. He he spent he spent some time on this. Maybe the nerdiest thing I've ever and seen in my life. And now you see me. <laughs> I, just now maybe. you see me as somebody <laughs> new. I'm not that chase naive virgin trying to prove something to you. Okay, that's okay. Because I took all your best shots without a single error shown. You know I've written way more data than all you have ever known. Go on now, watch the gigs pile up, more senseless random files. Just to see if I'll get stuck. Smart Money says I've got the miles in the tank. I ain't going to stop. This is Biggie Smalls. I ain't going to stop now. And you can take that to the bank. Wow. And then, then it fades out. Dun, 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 yeah, that's good times. But no, I'm not going to take the bait. Thanks, though. <laughs> yeah, it's worth a shot, you know. 